If you haven't already heard, then World of Darkness is working with production companies and writers and all of that to get Vampire the Masquerade and all of their World of Darkness stuff on TVs and film. Which is really exciting because A, that'll give me more things to talk about, but more importantly, B, we get another chance to see our favorite supernatural creatures doing their thing. We've we've had basically every kind of game there is, uh, some books, we've had uh, an audio book now, uh, what other f media formats are there? <laughs> and it's pretty, pretty cool that the, the uh, uh, the World of Darkness is going to end up in front of more people. So the details are that the production company behind The Witcher and Expanse, which are two shows that I really, really loved. Uh, Henry Cavill was a brilliant uh, uh, Geralt and I really, really loved The the Expanse. It's such a cool story and, and beautifully portrayed uh, on screen with the the CG and all of the different details that they put in that show. It's a really, really great thing. Like, not everyone agrees. My partner thinks that it's, it's rubbish. But, uh, well, I mean, I don't think a World of Darkness show would be for her either. Seeing the uh, writer Eric Heiserer, who uh, was behind Shadow and Bone, and Christine Boylan, who was behind Punisher, which I also quite enjoyed, um, is is really good because I don't know if you're sensing a pattern between these different shows, but they've all got an, a, a vibe. They've all got a, a little bit of an edge, like Shadow and Bone is more uh, young adult fiction style, but they're like, there's shadows and magic and evil and like a political plot to take over the world or something. And uh, it's, it. I mean, that sort of fits, doesn't it? That sort of fits with uh, Vampire the Masquerade specifically, I suppose, uh, and the World of Darkness in general. Evil is behind every uh, curtain. <laughs> it's not entirely serious, it's a bit schlocky, but they still kind of put all their, their heart into those shows and, uh, and, and really try and make them a... Uh, uh, not only a success, but also very entertaining. And I am very entertained, I would in fact, much enjoy being a vampire in a World of Darkness show, or even a mage. Or, you know, worst comes to worst, I'll be a werewolf. Um, just saying, uh, just, just saying. I think the way it'll go down is that because Vampire the Masquerade is obviously their biggest focus at the moment, we've had a bunch of books, we had a bunch of different games and stuff come out for it. That's probably the show or film I guess we're getting first. I don't know which it is. They haven't said. They just said they're working with uh, Hive Mind. They're working with these writers uh, to do something in the world of darkness. So my guess is Vampire will come first because it always does in World of Darkness. It's like if if you ever hear about vampires in any kind of media, you've got a pretty good understanding of what to expect from a vampire story. Uh, like there's gonna be blood and a bit of gore and and probably like the vampires die in some special way like a stake through the heart or the sun or uh, Everyone has a pretty good understanding whereas mage like magic is always different depending on what uh, universe you're in and uh, werewolves well, we get those as probably things to fight vampires in Underworld or whatever, and they're just kind of like pretty strong, which, you know, is what the the tropes is what World of Darkness kind of runs with and, and makes their own, but uh, I don't know, Orpheus, Hunter, uh, God, what else is there? Um, uh, uh, Wraith, Changeling, probably not as easily accessible. So we're going to get, we're probably going to get um, Vampire first. And here's the, the funny bit. They already did it. They tried it once. They did a Vampire the Masquerade TV show. Somewhere between light and darkness. What's happened to me? You're kindred now. You belong with us. Kindred. And it was called Kindred the Embraced. I decided to watch it. I've seen two episodes now. And, well... It is cheesy. Strong desires. 
where a kiss is to be remembered. It was released in 1996 and it shows. It was even released pre Buffy the Vampire Slayer, which also shows because, well, it's kind of dull. This, I suppose, is the worst case scenario is that they try and do this again. Kindred the Embraced is a kind of cop show, but it also has some of the constituent parts. It's like all the bits are there, but not in the right order, if you know what I mean. There's vampires, but they can go out in the day a little bit. Uh, and we get like little bits of explanation every now and again. That's like, oh, I just I just had a drink. I'll be fine in the sunlight for a bit. And then on the other hand, there's the prince as the main character, the prince of a city. He, he controls the mob and the police. That makes sense. He's he's got his fingers in all the pies. He's the most important and inf influential character. The problem is like he's kind of a nice guy. She knows the masquerade is the only protection we have from humans. What can I get you? Could I have a tomato juice? And if you were playing in a vampire chronicle with that as your prince, then I suppose, what's his name? Julian would probably get eaten alive. <laughs> it's not quite the cutthroat world that I have come to know and love. The best thing about Kindred the Embraced is that you start the show by going, SURPRISE MOTHERFUCKER! It's Eric King from Dexter. And then after that, you just go, Oh God, I remember that guy from a thing. It's Buffy. They're all from Buffy. <laughs> They've all been a vampire or a demon in Buffy the Vampire Slayer. It's brilliant. All of the main characters are men and, uh, it's probably one of the reasons why no one watched it when it first came out. It had a grand total of seven episodes aired, an eighth one made but never uh, put on the TV. And then, um, unfortunately, the, the guy who plays the prince, Mark Frankel, he died and uh, that probably put the final nail in the coffin of the show. And, and unfortunately, it's not a kind of Tommy Wiseau, the room kind of bad either. Even though the dialogue is horrific at times, <laughs> like there's multiple references to, oh, you're not one of our kind. And everyone else is like, the hell are you talking about, you goon? They are any of my kind. What do you mean, my kind? We aren't the same kind. Of course we're not. I'm a man, you're a woman. It works out pretty good. I probably got a couple of years on you. Oh, I'm a lot older than you think. There's this Toreador woman who is infatuated with a police officer and like, there's so much sex in this. So I this, this goes without saying, but they have sex with no run up to it. She's just like, oh, I had sex with you and you're bodies changing and then you tasted my blood and that's why like you're in pain and like you're feeling sick because of my blood you've tasted you're gonna be more stronger or something i don't know what happens to him nothing appears to happen to him apart from he goes oh no and then he sees her as a wolf and he's like Whoa! Whoa! um anyway <laughs> so there are law differences and that's fine Honestly, if they butcher the lore of World of Darkness, then I mean, that probably won't happen, but I'll be fine with it as long as it's an interesting, compelling story that sort of makes sense in its own way. That's more important than making sure that everyone uses the correct dots of a discipline or whatever. How are you doing here? Don't you gotta be leaving soon? Sun's coming up. Oh no, no. We can go out in the day after we fed. And I think that kind of brings me to the fact that since the 90s, not only general pop culture, but also vampire has changed significantly. Where all of the main characters were white dudes or white women. Uh, in this new series, film, whatever, I think uh, we would all be so excited to see new faces, new uh like stories about people with uh, a variety of histories and cultures and uh, agendas and, and backgrounds 
to to make the world more exciting and i i really enjoy how diverse the fan base is of uh, all people people of all sexualities and uh, identities and i think reflecting that in the show is incredibly important because it's part of what uh, attracts people to role playing and and then vampire is that you can make the world your own you can make your character reflect things that you either do uh, do experience or uh, don't experience and want to explore having lots of uh, queer characters would and, and and people of color would would just you know make it less stale <laughs> than kindred was uh but you know the 90s <laughs> Uh, so after all that, what is the takeaway? Well, Kindred the Embraced is bad, but I'm going to do more videos on it because there's going to be more TV shows and it would be interesting to see all of the uh, all of the nonsense that it made in the 90s. Uh, B, they probably shouldn't remake it or even use the same title. It's a terrible title. Vampire the Masquerade makes sense, if you know what a masquerade is, but... Kindred the Embrace just sounds like friends that hug. I would love to see something other than vampires versus werewolves, but the way vampires set up, it's not necessary to include werewolves. It would be cool to see hunters. It would be cool to see, you know, little nods to other parts of the world as they begin to introduce it in a kind of Marvel Cinematic Universe style. It will be somewhere that isn't in a book or isn't in a comic at the moment so it won't be twin cities it won't be chicago or seattle from bloodlines 2 it might be la because uh, a large part of the reason this tv show is happening is uh probably because of la by night so it might follow on from that and i imagine they'll use the same uh continuous law story who knows or um florida because you can have Florida Man in it. Um, I don't want to see LA. Honestly, as an English person, I couldn't give much of a rat's ass about too many American city stories, but who knows, maybe it'll be an international romp, Indiana Jones style, uh, going all over the, the Mediterranean or whatever. What American city do you want to see? I would love to hear theories about what supernaturals or what place or what kind of story we're going to see. But honestly, I think the main takeaway is whatever it is, it can't be as bad as Kindred the Embraced. So uh, I I'll see if I can do a proper review of it in the near future. But until then, if you want to see that, subscribe. Let me know in the comments your thoughts. And until next time, goodbye. I don't know why I waved. I hope you wave back.